Additional paragraphs we will include ISA 701 key audit matters. So guys, anything that we believe as an auditor that is crucial or has significant impact on the audit, we want to actually highlight in our audit report. So it's not us changing our opinion. So make note here, this is not an opinion. I give my opinion, unqualified, qualified, adverse or disclaimer, and then I might want to just highlight some crucial information that I picked up through doing the audit. And some of the crucial things that I would potentially want to communicate or list as key audit matters is anything where we said had a higher risk of material misstatement or whether there was a significant risk. Now remember, your significant risks, we do an ISA 315. They are fraud, related party transactions, complex transactions, transactions outside the normal course of business, where there's been a change in regulation or new adaption to a regulation or early adoption of a regulation and where there is an estimate or judgment. All of these were considered significant risks. So I might want to highlight that information in a key audit matters paragraph, just including these are the key audit matters. Or if there was a significant audit judgment, which makes sense because we've already said a significant risk is where there was judgment in terms of an estimate. And once again, where there was uncertainty in an estimate, it makes sense because that's a significant risk. Or significant events or transactions that occurred during the audit. And once again, that makes sense because complex transactions would be considered having a significant risk. And anything where it was a challenge for us to get evidence, so potentially limitations of scope, or it looked like it was going to be a limitation of scope but eventually we're able to get it. So these are things we would include in the key audit matters paragraph. Just make a note here yeah, that where the key audit matter that you would want to include was the reason for a modified opinion. So it was the reason for a qualified or an adverse opinion. Remember, we don't have key audit matters if it's a disclaimer, so it's irrelevant. Then I don't have to include the details in the key audit matter paragraph. I just need to provide the reference to the basis for that paragraph as the key audit matter. So I'll still have the paragraph, key audit matters, but my description would just be, please refer to the basis for the qualified or adverse opinion. Or if the key audit matter that I would want to disclose here was the fact that there was a material uncertainty with regards to the going concern, and this was disclosed in the financials, then I would have had that paragraph per ISA 570 would have been included already. So once again, I don't want to repeat, so I will just include a reference to the material uncertainty related to the going concern paragraph under my key audit matter paragraph. So what I'm showing you here, guys, is don't repeat info that's in either the basis for an opinion or in another paragraph in the key audit matter paragraph. Just give them a reference to that other paragraph or the basis. Okay, and just see here that you don't give a key audit matter paragraph if they disclaim the opinion. We just had a look at that in the standards, in the appendix for your modification paragraphs.
Let's quickly go have a look at ISA 701, just so you can see the information about the paragraph, but in order for you to see how you should structure the paragraph, you need to look at your appendixes in your opinion standards. So either in 700 or in 705, where we've just come from. So in ISA 701, communicating key audit matters in the independent auditor's report. Let's go have a look at your scope, just so you can see communicating the key audit matters in the auditor's report. And the reason why we do it, guys, is to assist the users in understanding what we felt was very significant in the audit. Because otherwise they just get the report with our opinion, but they don't really know, you know, where we spent a lot of our time, where we potentially had issues. And so we just want to actually give them a little bit more insight into how the audit went. Just note, chair, that this paragraph is not a substitute for expressing a modified opinion or not a substitute for discussing whether a material uncertainty exists. If they disclosed that, we would have our own paragraph in the, finance, in the report which says material uncertainty related to the going concern. Okay, so it's just additional information. Nothing changes to my report. Okay, so the requirements, matters that we think are significant need to be included. And I've highlighted A9 to A18 so we can see some additional, but let's just first look at what they say here. Where there is a significant risk or a higher risk of material misstatement, that's what we want to include here. Or where there was significant judgments or where there were significant events or transactions. Okay, A9 to 18 give us some more. So let's have a look at those. So I've made a note here for A13, which says where we have struggled to obtain the evidence that we specifically needed. And then, yeah, matters that may have not been disclosed, but we felt were important. So an example, they implemented a new IT system. We spent a lot of time auditing this new IT system, which may have given us challenges or not, but it's important that the users are aware of that. And then a whole bunch of things. So other things that we might find important or the users might find important, where there was lots of subjectivity estimates in um, or uncertainty in determining estimates, where we needed to get special assistance, so where we had to use an expert to help us. Maybe the users want to be aware of that. Or where there were lots of control deficiencies. Okay, so these are all indicators or additional information we might think the users would want to be aware of. Okay, how do we go about communicating this? We include it in the auditor's report under key audit matters. Remember, we don't include it if we're giving a disclaimer of an opinion. Okay, it's not a substitute for expressing a modified opinion. We've already said that. And instances where we don't feel that we need to communicate key audit matters, is potentially where a law or regulation does not allow them to publicly disclose certain things. Or it's believed that this might actually outweigh the public interest benefits. So they don't actually think it's important for anything to be brought up here. Other things to consider, if a matter gives rise to a modified opinion or there is a material uncertainty that has been disclosed, then we don't need to include all of the details in the key audit matter paragraph. All we need to do is include the reference. We'll still have the key matter paragraph just to show that there were and then reference to the basis for the modified opinion or reference to the material uncertainty paragraph. Okay, so I don't have to repeat 
This is the place where we don't repeat things. If there are no key audit matters to communicate, then we need to inform them that there are no key audit matters, so we still need to actually have the paragraph. Okay, and you'll see that there in A58, except for the matters included, where else there are no other key audit matter paragraphs. Cool, let's go to emphasis of matter.